guys, Ham Solo here, Kilo Zero Foxtrot Yankee Romeo. So I'm going to continue on with my Back to the Basics series, and this one is going to be about the second radio I ever purchased, which is the Anytone 878 UV2 Plus. Now, the reason I went ahead and purchased this radio is because I wanted a better radio for my analog uh, transmissions that I was doing. Uh, for my summits on the air activations as well as uh, doing just general repeater work because you know bow fangs have their limitations and so I went ahead and went with the Anytone radio uh, because of that reason also it's a DMR radio or digital mobile radio and so that in and of itself is a headache and so I'm probably going to have to do several different videos on the DMR aspect of this, uh, but I just wanted to try to introduce that to you uh, for this video session right now. So here is a DMR radio. Uh, this is the Anytone 878UV2+. Uh, that's a GoPro camera, so it's going to be just a little bit out of focus because there's only one focal point on the GoPro, uh, but basically uh, it has uh, two different uh, sub-channels, a channel A and a channel B. Uh, I have it right now on two different DMR repeaters or digital mobile radio repeaters. Um, it has a lot of information on the screen. It's all color uh, screen so you can fix, uh, fix colors to different portions of it. And uh, I picked this radio up from uh, Bridgecom Systems. And of course uh, that comes with uh, sometimes a super code plug or you can also get uh, their online Bridgecom University which will show you all the ins and outs of how to program and use the radio but this is uh, kind of what I went with as far as uh, my choice for DMR a lot of times people say well then what is DMR so digital mobile radio was a basically a commercial radio service uh, that was started off of a European standard and so just like TVs uh, several several years ago went to digital communication uh, just like in the fire service uh, when I was using digital radios wow 15 years ago uh, you know that digital uh, protocol if you want to call it uh, finally was adopted so that hams could use it and so what were we doing in order to use uh, those radios basically uh, it's an older standard of digital communication it predates uh, LTE uh, cell phone communications and so this one was called time distribution multiple access and basically what it means is that let's say I have a repeater tower and I have people on different radios and they want to talk on two different channels and so what time distribution multiple access allows them to do is I can have radio one on channel one I can have radio two on channel two they both transmit to one single repeater tower and then that repeater will send out both signals on two different channels even though it's only broadcasting on one channel and so how does that happen what's the miracle that that's transpiring there well because it's digital it's basically turning the voice or whatever you're transmitting it could be APRS it could be packet radio it could be whatever it's turning that into basically ones and zeros that's what it's doing and every 30 milliseconds channel one will broadcast and 30 milliseconds later channel two and then channel one and then channel two every 30 milliseconds going back and forth between channel one channel two channel one channel two it'll do that 16 times a second and because it's all digital there's no interference between the two so a single repeater tower can accept both communications on the two different time slots and then retransmit them out on the two different channels without there ever being an inter inter interruption, without there ever being an effect from the repeater. The repeater's putting it out off of one basic radio frequency, but it's going to two different talk groups at two different times because it's switching back and forth and back and forth. That's what DMR is. Now, 
I'm relating it mostly to the way we're going to use it for the ham service. And so this is not going to be all the history of DMR going back to Vietnam or whenever, right? This is just how we use it for ham radio, all right? So, basically, when I have a radio that can do DMR, I have to get a DMR ID. It's really simple, it's free. You go online, I think it's uh, radioid.com or something, and you basically just sign up for a DMR ID. You gotta fill out a form, and then once you fill out that form, they'll ask you to provide a copy of your amateur radio license, because they wanna make sure you're a real person, right, that has a license. So once you send it in to them, or fix it to the form, or whatever, it's been a while since I got mine, uh, they will issue you a unique digital ID for your radio. And that digital ID is in the neighborhood of seven characters now, I think, something like that. And there are over 200,000 people with DMR IDs right now. Over 200,000. So the earlier versions of these radios, like the UV868, the UV878, they could only store so many digital IDs. I guess they didn't ever think that there were gonna be that many. And then once they finally determined that there was gonna be a whole bunch of people that are gonna to wanna to use DMR, then they had to start creating newer versions of the radio, in this case, the UV2+, Plus, or if you want to do the mobile radios, the 578 uh, UV3+, Plus. and uh, that was allowing them to go up to 500,000 DMR ID contacts, I believe. And so, you know, right now, when somebody calls in, and I think you might be able to see it on that screen, when somebody calls in, you'll see their, their ID up there at the top, and so, again, I know it's a little fuzzy because it's a GoPro, but basically it says on that uh, West Creek Wide, which is the uh, Rocky Mountain Ham Group's DMR uh, uh, antenna systems, uh, the last person to call in was calling in on that time slot number one. That's the 30 milliseconds for channel A. And it shows his call sign, whatever it is. And, you know, that's associated to his DMR ID. And then he called in. And so somebody can see all the information on that person. Uh, it'll have everything that would be in QRZ for your uh, ham radio license. And so that's pretty much uh, what that radio looks like when somebody transmits on it. You'll see all their information, where they're from, what city, what state. And then uh, it'll just keep uh, rotating the blinking at the top if you want it to. This is the last person that called in on that channel. That's kind of how that works. And so, um, is there a, a benefit to DMR? Sure, and we'll have to go into that in, in many different videos because DMR um, is just a shade bit difficult. You know, it's technical. Um, there's a lot, a lot of programming things that you have to do in order to get it to work. That's why a lot of times when you go with someone like BridgeCom University or uh, BridgeCom Systems and they allow you to have Bridgecom University, the, the classes, plus they'll set you up with a super code plug or an ultra code plug or whichever one you want. It'll already be pre-programmed when it shows up to your house. Now, there are some people who just don't like DMR. They complain about DMR, they say it's not true radio, this and that and the other thing. Well, again, it's just depending on how you're using the thing. Um, if you're doing it like I'm doing it right now, and I have it on those uh, Rocky Mountain Ham uh, repeater uh, stations, they are not connected to the internet. They are broadcasting between 33 repeater towers spanning from the Wyoming area all the way down to New Mexico and Arizona. And it's just repeater towers to repeater towers. And uh, I think they're using uh, microwave uh, frequencies. Uh, you're calling in on UHF and then the towers are rebroadcasting microwave right it's not on the internet none of that is on the internet okay can you use dmr on the internet sure i can take this radio as it is right now and i can pick this radio up and 
when I sit there and key in and I'm on a certain channel, it'll go to my hotspot, which would be, see if I have my finger in the shot, over that way, I would have a hotspot, and I could key up and talk to somebody in Japan right now. I could talk to somebody in Switzerland. I could talk to somebody in uh, Ireland, let's say. All I have to do is be on that talk group, and it'll do over the internet because I'm radio frequency to my hotspot. The hotspot's turning that into uh, uh, basically TCP voiceover uh, uh, IP, and then that's sending it to uh, their hotspot, which is decoding, and then transmitting it to their radio, and then they hear you. And so again, I could just key up right now if I had my hotspot on, and I could just talk to somebody in Japan. You know, and so uh, there are a lot of different facets that you can do with DMR. There are multiple different digital protocols that I don't have any of those radios. There's D Star, there's Yesu System Fusion, um, there are some of the old DMR Mark systems and things like that. I know when I go and travel to Texas, uh, I get on their Sea Bridge. Uh, systems there which are their own independent radio towers like I said uh, the ones I'm on right now Rocky Mountain uh, Ham Association uh, has their own setup of 33 uh, uniquely tied in repeater towers and so what I have there on that screen that you're looking at is on that channel A that's all those repeater towers tied in together when it says wide that's all 33 repeater towers on the bottom where uh, it might be a little bit harder to read it says west west creek central that is basically let's say the 10 repeater towers that are in the central part of colorado you can go on north you can go on south you can do central you can do a lot of different things you can do new mexico specific you can do local uh, so it just depends on how uh, you set up your radio i have all of those in there uh, these are just the ones that i'm monitoring currently but Again, this same radio that I have showing you right here that I'm all talking about DMR, it also does just analog regular repeaters. And so, again, I use this for my very first summits on the air activation and, uh, and several since then. And, uh, you know, it's a VHF or UHF. And uh, it's got, uh, you can put different antennas on it. I was using Ed Fong rolled up J-Pole. Um, I also have uh, some... Uh, uh, signal stuff, signal stick uh, that I use a lot uh, when I'm doing some of my summits on the air. Uh, again, VHF, UHF, regular uh, simplex calling out. You can talk on repeaters. You can do all that kind of stuff. And it has the DMR uh, functionality. And so that's why that ended up being my second radio. And uh, I've used it quite a bit. It is my daily carry. I always have it with me, always on. When I travel to all these different states, that I'm doing my summits and park activations, I always have this radio with me in the event that I'm gonna do uh, VHF contacts uh, or UHF contacts while I'm on a summit or something like that. I did find it incredibly difficult to do that with parks on the air because you don't have elevation. And so that was a big uh, mistake I did with the, uh, uh, trying to do an activation in Florida where they had no summits. And at the time I didn't have any HF radios. And so I was using that. I tried to do a parks on the air off of a, almost like a barrier island and uh, it went pretty bad. <laughs> and so I will actually put that link uh, up here. Uh, hopefully it'll appear up here. So I'll put that link to that activation. That was one of my very first POTA fails uh, trying to do it with uh, VHF. I'm not even sure if I got back to the, to the main shoreline and, uh, and it was pretty rough. And so, but again, uh, I do take this with me every single time. Uh, I did have it just recently in Michigan when I did that park and summit over there in Michigan. And, uh, and so this is uh, my daily carry. This is Ham Solo K0FYR, my Back to the Basics series. And thanks for watching, 73.